Hi, I'm Fred Adams, and the purpose of this video is to share a few family memories of our interactions with Ellen White and her descendants. I've been a Seventh-day Adventist Christian all my life. I believe in living by the teachings of the Bible and following the example of Jesus. I believe that salvation is available to all who choose to accept the free gift of eternal life through faith in Christ. And our lives will demonstrate that acceptance by our actions, such as obeying the commandments, which Jesus summarized in Matthew 22, 27, and 29. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I also believe in the Bible gift of prophecy, as stated in Joel 2, 28 and 29, Revelation 12, 17 and 19, 10. And Seventh-day Adventists believe that Ellen G. White exercised the biblical gift of prophecy during more than 70 years of her public ministry. During that time, God gave her more than 2,000 visions, which helped solidify the church as it established worldwide health, educational, and evangelistic work. Throughout her lifetime, Ellen White encouraged people to dig deep into the Bible, to focus on Jesus, and to reach others for the kingdom of heaven. Ellen White was hesitant to be known as a prophet because, as she stated, many who boldly claim that they are prophets are a reproach to the cause of Christ, and because my work includes much more than the word prophet signifies. She also said, Early in my youth I was asked several times, are you a prophet? I have ever responded, I am the Lord's messenger. She also declared, Little heed is given to the Bible, and the Lord has given a lesser light to lead men and women to the greater light. As a child, my grandfather Fred Adams lived near Elmshaven, Ellen White's home during her last 15 years, between 1900 and 1915. During the next few minutes, he shares some of his memories in a recording which I made as a teenager. And I went to school to San Tam, the San Tam Church School. Mm-hmm. Went down to foot of the hill. Yeah. Wasn't very far, maybe half a mile from Sister White's place. Mm. And we lived right across, the, right next to their orchard. My father worked for her. So you got to see her quite often, didn't you? Yeah, so we used to go over to her house and the children would come there and she'd tell stories to the children. Sometimes she used a stereopticon to show health slides projected onto a white sheet hung on the wall. My father and I would cut oak wood for them. And I would rick it in their barn. Mm. And he pruned their orchard. So I got to hear her talk a lot and got to visit. That's interesting. Yeah, uh, we'd ask, ask her questions. We went around working on the fruit. I remember one time we had a question whether we should pick hops and pick grapes when they, when they made beer out of the hops and made wine out of the grapes. What did she say? Well, she said that that wasn't our responsibility. We were out making an honest living and it wasn't our responsibility what happened to them. What are hops? Hops are a funny little things about that long. They grow up on vines, they, they put them up on trellis, something like you would string beans. Maybe you've seen some of those places down in Sacramento, they poles up and poles across. Yeah. Well, that's for hops. Hmm. The hops grow up there and when hop picking time comes, you, you go and you, you just pull the vine up and jerk it down this way, and then you strip the hops off in a bag. Hmm and they take them and make beer out of them. Hmm. How many years were you there when Ellen White was there? About two. Two years, huh? Were you about my age then? Well, I was uh, eight and nine. Eight and nine, so you're a lot younger. Well, I went to second grade. Mm -hmm. Second grade church to learn maybe the third grade. Then we moved somewhere else. We were going to Healdsburg, and I went to church school over there. Orville Baldwin, out of Camino, came there about the time I was there. He drove from Santa Rosa, I guess it was. 
and went up to the horse and buggy, came to see Sister White, asked some questions, and so uh, they went up to her room. She had a room upstairs. Have you ever been to her estate? Yeah. Her house? Mm -hmm. Remember this room upstairs where she studied? Yeah. Well, they went up there and were asking questions. And one of the questions they asked uh, was, uh, how do you know these, these things that uh, you write about are, are true? And uh, she said, you see that spot where, where your son is standing right there? So that's where the angel comes and stands and tells me these things. Hmm. Orville was standing right on the place where the angel. Well, that's that's interesting. And quite uh, quite often in her writing, you'd say, said the angel. Mm -hmm. the angel was sent to uh, tell her. And uh, then when she went to write, she couldn't think of all of those things. She couldn't remember everything, but when she went to write, all of it would come right back to her, mm. just as she'd write. Well, in lots of ways, it, it's hard to believe that there's a spiritual world, that there are spiritual beings that we can't see, but uh, our vision is so limited. That's right. If, uh, if the Lord would open her eyes. Yeah, the time of Elisha, when, when Elisha's servant was shaking because of the great army, and Elisha prayed that the servant's eyes would be open, me, his eyes were open, he looked, and the, and the whole mountain were filled with angels. Mm -hmm. It's just because we can't see. That's right. Ellen White had a great privilege being able to see some of the things, angels and things. Scientist Tyndall, talking about our vision, he says that uh, we're so limited in our vision. We see colors from red to violet. That uh, the colors are the different vibrations of light, mm -hmm. and uh, we have such a small vision. We only see just a few of the light waves, and he says that what what we see now to what we will see when our vision is like it ought to be is like an eighth of an inch compared to the distance to the sun. Oh my. Uh, the distance to the sun is 93 million miles. Mm -hmm. so what we see is an eighth of an inch. What we'll see when our eyes are open will be the distance to the sun. Why, wow, that's hard to comprehend. It is. And uh, he also says uh, what we hear is so limited. You can hear a tone uh, about eight octaves, isn't it? of sound there are in nature, three billion octaves. Wow. That's got quite a lot. As a child, my grandmother, Marjorie Ward, attended meetings where Ellen White spoke and remembered her to be a loving, kind woman who spoke so that children could understand her messages about the love of Jesus. Grandma clearly recalled going with her mother to speak with Mrs. White after one particular meeting and after a brief visit, at her mother's request, Ellen White prayed for my grandma, placing a hand on her head, asking God to bless her in a special way. My own memories include visits to Elmshaven, where Ellen White's granddaughter, Grace Jacques, gave tours and shared fascinating facts and stories about life in the home. She pointed out the place where the angel stood by her bed during Ellen's night visions. Mrs. White's grandson, Arthur White, and granddaughter Grace spoke at the Placerville Church in 1976, sharing fascinating stories of God using their grandmother to strengthen the church and help leaders who had gone astray. Grandson Frank White and his wife, Rachel, were members of the Placerville Church where I attended while not in Mexico and other places. They even attended our wedding in 1981. 
In 2011, we attended a seminar by Ellen White's great-grandson Charles White at Redwood Camp Meeting. During each meeting, he shared many more fascinating stories about how God used the ministry of Mrs. White to help keep his people on track, pointing us to the Bible, and keeping our focus on Jesus. My grandparents were ages 21 and 18, respectively, when Ellen White died. So as they grew up, they had many opportunities to hear her speak in public meetings. They remembered her as a kind, thoughtful, caring woman who loved Jesus with all her heart. If you're interested in learning more about the life and ministry of Ellen White, as well as Elmshaven, check out the websites and links below this video.